Hello everybody, hello friends on the interwebs, and special shout out to my Linux brothers and sisters that are using a Linux desktop operating system. Anyway, welcome to another series, another video for our Caden Live 2009 tutorial series. So before we get started, I just want to show you this resource. So if you want to uh, use some video clips um, that are nice, easy to work with, uh, because you're either not confident or not happy with the video clips that you have, go to pexels.com slash videos. These are free to download. I've downloaded a few clips that we will be using today. So that's that. Anyway, let's proceed. So today we are going to be talking about how to do basic transitions and effects onto your video clips. All right. So I've opened up a uh, session of Caden Live here and note that this is actually a flat pack version. So the flat pack has received a bump in the uh, version number and I've been testing this one out and it seems to be performing quite well. I haven't had any issues, no crazy bugs or whatever. So I take it back. So the flat pack is actually a good uh, option to use. Otherwise the app image will still be awesome. Okay. So we're using the flat pack image today. We've set up our project here to be 1080p, 25 frames per second. If you need to set it up a little bit differently, just go to project, project settings, and choose a resolution that you need. So 1080p, 4K, 720p, whatever you need. All right, so we'll leave it at that. Okay, we'll add in a couple of clips. So we'll add in this uh, sunrise one or sunset, and we'll add in this coffee machine one. All right, so we'll place this at the bottom. And for now, I will just uh, mute this video. I'll disable the audio, okay, because we don't need it. It has a bit of audio in it. And we'll put this coffee cup, coffee machine here on top. Okay, so basically with Caden Live, whatever gets uh, placed on top gets played. So this is actually an example of a basic cut transition okay so you can leave it at that or we can add some special um, fancier effects if you will I try to keep it super simple so uh, I won't go into too much detail about some of or all of the transitions and the effects but we'll go over a few of the basic ones okay so what I love about Caden Live is that it's so easy to add a transition so basically the way that you do it is you would place the clip that you want on top okay of your other clip and you can mouse over to the lower corner and just click to add a transition alright so I'll zoom in a bit and that's actually added a dissolve transition as you can see here so when I click on that transition the properties will show up in the properties box here right and it just says it's a dissolve alright so let's check that out so when I play it dissolves into the clip above alright so that's a, you know, I love a dissolve transition. It's basic, it's nice and elegant, it's easy to add. So I don't really use any more than that, but we'll explore a few other transitions here. So we can actually change this dissolve transition into something else. So the way that we do that is I've clicked on dissolve, right? And I can use this drop down box to click something else. Today, let's talk about a wipe, okay? So it says here, a linear onto the x-axis. So let's check that out. So it just wipes it left to right, okay? And we can change the settings of it. So we can make it a little bit longer, right? To make that wipe longer, okay? We can change it, we can revert, uh, invert it. Let's see what invert does. So it just wipes it left, right to left, I mean. Okay, we can change it to something else. Let's try a burst. Let's see what the burst looks like. So there you go. That's a burst. But that was in reverse. So let's try it the other way around. Okay, awesome. Let's try a couple more. Uh, let's do cloud. Let's see what cloud does. That's pretty cool. So there's other effects on here. Um, spiral. So yeah, plenty to choose from, okay? Like I said, for me, I keep it pretty simple. I don't really use anything more than a dissolve, 
because a dissolve is pretty awesome. Okay. Now we can do the same at the other end of the clip. So we can add a transition, add a dissolve in there. So let's have a look. And it dissolves back into the clip at the bottom. All right. Sometimes you may not get that clean effect, okay? And you may just need to click on the reverse. So it looks like it, it automatically did the reverse dissolve for me, okay? But just in case it didn't do that, try unchecking this, okay? And if it looks something dirty like that, okay, something messy like that. So the easiest way to solve that is just try to check the reverse box. And that should pretty much fix it, make it look a lot nicer. All right, there you go. Easy. All right, so that's our transition, okay? So pretty basic to add, pretty basic to edit, okay? And if you don't want this, simply select the transition and press delete, and it's gone, okay? To add it back in, you just click on the lower right corner, lower corner. And you can move it around, and it usually sticks itself onto the clip that you're moving around. Okay? So that's good. Alright, let's talk about effects. Okay? So, this, is, this, can be get, this can get a little bit confusing because some of the effects actually do the same thing. And then some of the transitions do the same thing as the effects do. Anyway, we're not going to go over too many of the details. I'll leave it up to you to play around, but we'll switch over to the effects tab, okay? And we'll just play around with a couple here. Uh, let's go to artistic, okay? So let's do dust. So the way to add an effect is simply to click on it and drag it onto the clip that you want it applied to, okay? So we're adding some dust onto our top clip here. So, yep. So it's just added those particles, right? And again, if you click on the clip, right, this is where all the effects properties are, okay? So we can increase the maximum number of dust. Let's do 20, make it really dirty, all right? So it's just, yeah, increases the dust, okay? If you want to reduce it, we'll do maybe 5, okay? Maybe it's a lot lesser. A little bit more realistic. Yeah. Okay. And you can stack um, or you can add more effects. Okay. Let's say old film. So same thing. Drag and drop it. So you can see here your old film and then your dust effects on there when I click on that clip. Okay. So you can view which ones you have. You can set one or the other. You can, you know, not have the old film. All right. If you want to test out what the effect is, okay, you can add the old film back in. Looks like the old film just makes it shaky and stuff. Okay. Right. You can copy and paste effects. Okay. So say you've played around with the settings and you're really loving the effect and you want to apply it to other clips in your uh, project. What you can do is just uh, copy and paste it. So really simple. So let's say we want to copy these two effects on here. So we'll right click, we'll do copy, okay? I'll select the bottom clip, do paste effects, all right? So we'll paste it, both of those effects on there. So there we go. Yeah, all right? Say if I don't want a particular one, I don't want it to be old film, I can delete the effect, okay? So it's just gonna be the dust one, and then yeah. All right, now let's talk a little bit about resizing and cropping a video, okay, a video clip. So that actually falls, can fall under our effects. So this is where it can get a bit confusing and complicated because some of them will do the same thing. So let's just do crop, scale, and tilt. We'll add that in, okay, so we can crop uh, let me delete the old film and the dust one, okay? So what you can do is you can adjust the thing here. So you see it's cropping, right? You can crop to the right, okay? You can scale. Oh, I don't know what that's doing. Yep, yeah, scale. Just play around with it. You can tilt. 
tilt the thing. Yeah. So yeah, so different things. But what I want to demonstrate is, for example, let's say you want this clip to play, this coffee cup clip, to play on the lower right hand side. Okay? What we can do is actually we can do a position and zoom, okay, effect. We can apply that, okay, and we can change the size to 50%, okay. So you see that it changed the size. We can also change the size here, okay. We can toggle the uh, keep lock the aspect ratio so that it doesn't distort our dimensions okay I can move it using my mouse here on the screen or I can move it using you know the X settings to be more precise okay right change this to like 25 percent okay so let's say I just wanted 25 percent I want to move it down here okay there we go and that applies to the whole clip here so what we're gonna see is gonna be something like that okay so this is useful say if you wanna have a smaller video here if you wanna have your face cuz you're uh, recording yourself on webcam okay you have two different input sources you can do that alright now the last thing I wanna discuss today is what if I wanna animate do a little bit of animation for that here so I'll show you how to do that, okay? And there's multiple ways of doing that, but how I like to get it done is through a transition called composite, okay? So we'll add a composite transition, okay? We'll extend that to the entire length of the clip, all right? Now, this over here, all right, when we go to the click on composite, shows up the properties, this is a keyframe. All right, so the keyframe allows us to set a particular time, okay, in our project where we want the, an effect to happen, okay. So we'll demonstrate this. So I'm playing the video, okay. Let's say around there, I want this image to start shrinking, okay. I want this to be 50% uh, of its size, okay. So let's set 50% on here. Oh, sorry. I skipped a step. We're going to add a keyframe, okay? And at that point in the video timeline, I want the size to shrink to 50, okay? So there you go. It shrunk it down. It automatically positioned it to, to the left on there, but it shrunk it down, okay? So let's have a look at what that looks like. Now I can click on our composite here so that we can see what that would look like, okay? So I'm pressing spacebar to play, so you can see there, it's shrinking it down, all right? Say, uh, I don't really like that. I want it to play for a little bit and then shrink down, okay? So what I can do is I can select on my composite, go to that keyframe, all right? Select the first keyframe, delete that. So it's back to where we started, okay? So I want it to play at 100% up until here, all right? And then I want it to start shrinking uh, around there, okay? So I'll add another keyframe, right? And at that point, I want it to shrink to 50%, okay? So you'll see the difference here in a second. So I'll move it back, okay? Press play, so there you go. It's playing, 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 then shrinks, okay? Then when it gets to here, it's 50% of the size, all right? Now let's say I want this to move, okay, from here to here, okay? So I can add another keyframe, all right? So from this point to this point, it's going to move, all right? And in its final destination, okay, I want it to, and it's going to follow the path of your mouse as well. So let's do something a little crazy. Ah, uh, maybe not, okay? It's just going to move in a straight line over there all right and then I want it yeah let's let's just play it okay so we're gonna play it's gonna shrink 
Okay. And then it's going to move. There we go. Right? So you can change your keyframes by clicking. Okay. On here. All right. I can change this position. Okay. I can click on this one. It's starting position. I don't want to mess with that. So this one, say I want to move it here. And then it's going to bounce up to here on the third one. Okay. There you go. It's going to follow. Right. And I can do even multiple things. Okay. So let's say I want it to finish up around here. Okay. So in my timeline, I want it to finish there. Okay. I'll add a new keyframe. All right. I want it to finish in this position. And I want it to finish at 25% of the size. Looks like it adjusted it. Again, I'll move it back there. Okay. So now, check it out. See what happens. It's going to move, right? Second keyframe. Oh, third one, sorry. Fourth one. And then it's shrinking at the same time that it's moving. All right. So this will come in handy, say, if you want to add some titles, if there's some effects that you want to demonstrate, you know. Um, you can do other things like zooming in and out if you want to do a slight zoom. So let's get rid of some of these keyframes for now. Say I just want to achieve like a really slight effect of zooming into this coffee cup, okay? So I'm going to play it. Let's say at that point, once it starts pouring, I want it to zoom in around this area, okay? So I can just do a slight zoom again, add a keyframe, and do slight zoom, 110%, okay? I don't want it to move, so I'll keep the position as close as possible to where it was, okay? Right? So let's see what that looks like. So it's just that slide zoom, yeah? So that's a really nice effect. We can add another keyframe. Say we wanna zoom it back out to 100%, okay? Uh, let's maybe zero that out. So it's back to where it started, okay? So let's check that out. So it's gonna do a slide zoom in, slide zoom out. All right. Well, guys, that's really all I wanted to talk about today. I hope it was clear. I hope you get to experiment with some of these things. And, um, yeah, let me know in the comments uh, other things that you want to learn next week or next time because I do this in my free time. Uh, I'll try to cover uh, text and incorporate some of the transitions and effects that we actually did today. So next week or next time. We are going to talk about titles, all right? So until then, I hope that you learned something, and I hope to see you again soon. Good luck. Happy video editing. Bye-bye.